Well, we stopped here at this lovely beach. It's spelled G-N-E-J-N-A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that because I don't want to uh, butcher it. I don't know. It. Yeah, there's like special Maltese characters that I don't know anything about. They're pretty interesting, those characters, right, huh? Right, But let me show you this beautiful uh, beach area here. So just along here is just a bunch of uh, boathouses, it looks like. And just look at this beautiful water. There's a nice sandy beach area here with what looks like a couple of... Um, areas for you to get some ice cream or a cool drink or something to that effect. It's a bit windy. We were hoping to find a beach that's less windy so maybe we could hop in. The water's going to be cold. We already know that. You know, this water is actually not very cold. We took a swim in the Mediterranean when we were in Turkey and uh, I think it was colder. Did you put your feet in? I'm not sure if you can walk much further along here without having to trample through people's property lines, but uh, it's pretty neat the way this is set up. It's like, uh, just like I was saying, just a bunch of boat houses, and people will come maybe on the weekend or in the week when they got some downtime with their family and open up their doors to their boat house and just kind of relax. A couple of people were having drinks and just relaxing, but uh, what a beautiful spot to have a little boat house. And these uh, towers here are everywhere. So you can see those all over the island. I assume they were some type of military post. Well, as I was saying, people are sitting in their little boat houses and having a meal or a drink or something. We opted to stop and ask what the name of the beach was. And we were told it is Janaina. I would have never gotten that. So. <laughs> If you're on your travels and you don't want to butcher the uh, name of something, always try to find a local who speaks a common tongue and ask them. And they will tell you you are at the beautiful beach of Janena. So we decided we're going to find another beach. Maybe one that's not as windy. We're trying to shoot a, another video to uh, give people an idea of the HES code required for Turkey. So I want to find a spot where I can rest my camera and not have a bunch of wind and maybe give everybody a little bit of information that might help them out in their travels. But we're gonna hop back in the car and drive along. As you can see from this little sign here, we've stopped at uh, these Roman baths. And as we were driving along, to find another beach, I saw this uh, sign for Roman Bath, so we pulled over. Uh, unfortunately, as the sign stated, it is closed for conservation, but we figured we'd walk around. Look at all these beautiful wildflowers that have sprung up. So unfortunately, everything is closed currently because of lockdown, so we're just trying to find some different things to see. I don't know that we'll be able to actually get over there, but there was a, what looked like a portion over here that I wanted to film, which I believe would have been the, the base of the Roman bath itself. Maybe I can go over here to this fence and give you guys a view. So I'll stick this through here and see what I can get. So you can see these uh, portions of wall there, and I think over there, just past that little shed looking thing is a bit of the ruins. Uh, so not much to see, but we figured we'd stop and uh, check it out either way. But something I did find, or actually Rachel found, is all this anise here. So this is all wild anise here. So you pluck a little bit of this, you get your, ooh, I think there was a big spider on there. Ooh, man, that's potent. The oils on my finger from that, it smells like, if you're familiar with uh, like Jägermeister or uh, black licorice is what it smells like. So there's just a ton of it here. Look at this. Just all amongst all these uh, wildflowers. So that's pretty neat that as you walk along, you can just find uh, wild seasonings, right? 
So here's a bit of those baths from the other side. As you can see, it wasn't a very grand site, but uh, certainly dated, and maybe it was just a bath that was used by soldiers, as I would assume this would have been like a military outpost or something back in the day. I had to park and walk back because I saw one of the really cool signs I wanted to show you. This one isn't exactly the one I've been seeing, but it's even better. So check this out. They have uh, hedgehog crossing signs. Well, we came to this little beach the other day and we figured we'd stop back by. It was really windy the other day when we came, but it's uh, not too bad today if I spin the camera around and show you guys. Just all these beaches are so beautiful. And none of them are uh, terribly populated right now. But we figured we'd head down here and give you a view. We thought we'd just drive around today and show you guys just a few beautiful beaches that we've seen. And uh, just the lovely environment that you can come to see here in Malta. It's a bit cold here. I know that this place is probably insanely popular in the uh, summer season and specifically for um, diving. It's uh, just crystal clear waters. You know, one thing I like about Malta and I noticed in the other beach we were at is all the little boathouses. And I saw that there's actually just a couple here. Let's see if I can show you these beach houses. Looks like maybe there's a little trail here. If I can get over here. So it looks like maybe this trail actually takes you down to these little uh, boathouses. So they're just here. And these people would just pull their boats straight out of the water here into their little houses. You can always find a neat little trail here. It might not take you far, but there's certainly a lot of little trails along a lot of these sites here as you go along. So if you're one to do a little adventuring on some trails, there's no shortage of trails here. What do you think about this little trail? It's lovely. It's beautiful views. Oh, that water is so clear. Yeah, my old Navy flip-flops are handling it okay. <laughs> Check out this rock. It looks a little seedy. Oh, boy. That guy is definitely coming down at some point. So I've come up on this cliff to show you that the other islands are just here. So we have Gozo there, the farthest island. And just here, with the beige tower on it, is Comino. <laughs> this here is the ferry port. So, unfortunately, with the restrictions that were put into place a couple days ago, uh, we are unable to travel between islands. The ferries are not running unless you uh, essentially need to move between islands or you are a resident of one of the other islands and let's say you need to come for work. Uh, so we cannot visit the other islands. We actually went to go there the day that uh, the restrictions were put in place, and that's how we learned. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of sites we can't see. Just there is actually what they call the Red Tower, and it is also closed. We uh, intended to go visit that site as well. Unfortunately, it has also closed to tourism. As you just saw, the new beach we just found, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that name because I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but this beach actually is nice and the sand is incredibly fine. It feels like you're walking on powder. However, where you enter into the water, as you can see, is covered with what I assume is a, a bunch of a seaweed. And there's also all these weird balls. Let me show you these. They look like mango seeds to me. I'm not curious. I'm curious what those are if anyone knows what those are But I don't know if this is uh, right now in the winter because all of this seaweed is dying off So it's all piling up here. We actually saw something similar in Turkey 
but the beach isn't exactly uh, the greatest as you enter into the water. But once you get past all the seaweed, you can see it's very shallow and very clear. It's probably very warm right here to swim in. I don't see anyone who was brave enough to actually have ventured into there, but uh, I can understand why. It's a bit windy today, so even if the water isn't as cold as you would think, it's going to be cold when you get out. But check out this uh, skyline here. I'm assuming that's a cathedral there. What do you think, Rachel? I would say so. Let's see if I can pull out my Google Maps and figure out what that is. And then just along the sea here, as you can see, there's uh, this walk here, and it just goes all the way around. Uh, that's one thing I really like about Malta is there's no shortage of uh, seafront walk. There's no shortage of uh, what I would call a, a melecon. And so if you're one to take a walk or go for a jog, you're certainly not going to have a lack of space to do that here. What'd you find? It's called the Parish Church of Melieja. So the Parish Church of the name of this beach, essentially. Yeah. Well, it's getting a little cooler out now and the clouds are blocking what little sun there is. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to get out and see too much. As I stated, the restrictions have limited us to what we're able to do. But we did want to at least get out for a day and find a few beautiful beaches and tell you that if you do decide to come to Malta now, there's some things to do, maybe not as much as you'd like, but you can always occupy your time by going out, taking a hike along a path, or just coming to one of these beautiful beaches and getting some sun. Uh, they're literally all very beautiful and uh, some, of course, more beautiful than others, but in general, they've all been fairly empty and so you're gonna enjoy your time either way. I would recommend getting out and seeing some of them. Of course, that's probably the number one thing on your list, but thanks for coming along and I appreciate you watching. Stay safe and stay sane out there.